Well, good morning, everyone. What a joy to have you here this day, and we could worship our Lord together. I'm Ramona Lynn Bethley. I'm your lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Alexandria, and we are delighted to have you all here uh, on such a special day of worship. We are going to celebrate uh, teachers, administrators, thump teachers, professors, all of you, uh, bus drivers, school board members, uh, everyone today, a little later in the worship service. Uh, so I hope that you will come forward uh, during that time. And then after this worship service, uh, we're going to have a potluck. So I hope that you will stay and uh, and have a share meal with us. You don't have to have brought anything. Rusty cooked all day yesterday, uh, so so he's covered he's covered everybody. So 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 please stay. Now, if you haven't done so already, I hope you'll take a moment to sign in on the black registration pads that you'll find to the inside aisle. Uh, share with us your contact information. I promise I won't come uh, to your house, but I would love to just be able to reach out and say hi and. Um, then pass it down to your neighbor, and if someone slips in late, I hope that you will help them register their attendance as well. So today we continue our sermon series on The Struggle is Real, and we're going to talk about marriage. Uh, we're going to talk about relationships. Uh, so you don't have to be married to hopefully get uh, something out of uh, this time together, this worship experience together. So we're going to talk about what it means to be in relationship with one another uh, and how we can best do that. There's a story of a woman who had been married for 50 years, and someone said, oh, what is the secret uh, to to a successful marriage, and she says, well, uh, about the first day we were born or married, you know, our first on the honeymoon, I decided, you know, I was going to make this list of the top 10 things that drove me crazy about my husband. And the person she was talking to said, oh, that's great. What, you know, like, what's on the list? And she says, well, you know, I never got around to actually making a list, but I decided anytime my husband did something that bothered me, I, used, I would say to myself, well, it's a good thing that's on the list. <laughs> well, relationships can be a lot like that. Uh, that sometimes we keep score, but best relationships is when you're not keeping score, when you're, when you're not making a list and we're forgiving uh, more easily, uh, slow to speak, quick to forgive. And we'll be talking about some other things as well. Uh, and we'll be looking at the first couple, Adam and Eve, and some good words from uh, the Apostle Peter on how we might build relationships. So as we begin this time of worship, let us pray. Loving God, we come to worship today to hear the good news, your good news of faith, of love, of hope, ringing out through song and prayer and scripture. We know that doubt, fear, and hatred can shake even the most committed believer and shatter the strongest of relationships. So Lord, in this time of worship, send your Holy Spirit upon us to shape us into hopeful people, faithful disciples, and loving servants. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you are able, I hope you will stand and join me in our call to worship that you'll find in your worship bulletin this morning. <coughs> Come with your questions. Come with your all. For the God who created all mankind in his image is in this place. Come with your energy. Come with your weariness. For the God who breathes new life into the dust meets us in this place. Come with your sadness. Come with your joy. For the God who became human to dwell among us is in this place. Come with your hearts open and your hands out. For the God who loves us and wants us to love others is in this place. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is number 156. I love to tell the story.
now as one body, let us affirm our faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. you to be seated and our children to come forward uh, for our children's time with Emily. All right, James, you're going to be the first one. Good job. Oh, leave me hanging. Good morning. Um, I, I thought I'd tell you some, some secrets this morning about... I'm going to tell you some secrets about teachers. Because you know I'm a teacher, right? The fact that they grade teachers is not a secret, Thomas. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows they grade papers. I'm going to tell you a secret about your teacher, whoever they are. Sometimes they make mistakes. Your teacher makes mistakes. You've seen it happen in real life. Are you sure? Sometimes Miss Shelley makes, makes mistakes. Sometimes. I don't think so. I have never seen her make a mistake in my life. <laughs> While you're at school, sometimes she does. But do they still love to teach you, even though they make mistakes sometimes? They do. Okay. Oh, we're having a, we're having a heart monitor James scuffle. Um, so sometimes, even when you are, okay. <laughs> sometimes, even when you do what you love, you make mistakes. Is there something you do that you really love that makes you happier than anything else? Do you like playing soccer more than anything else? No. Do you like painting more than anything else? No. Do you like hanging out with your family more than anything else? No. Do you like, what else do you do? Well, I'm trying to think. What else do you do? That singing. Okay, thank you, Miss Elizabeth. Do you like singing more than anything else? Yeah. yeah, I love to sing. I'm just really bad at it. So whatever that feeling is when you are doing that thing that you love to do more than anything else, that is God. Did you realize that? He's telling you, keep doing that thing that you love doing, that you're really good at, that makes you super duper happy. That's what he's telling you to do. And when, even when I was little, I loved babies. My little sister, I would, I would be all, she called me a pest because I was on her all the time trying to carry her around and play with her. Okay? I knew from a long time ago that I liked kids and I wanted to do something with kids when I grew up. And whatever it is that you are into right now, that may be what you are supposed to do with your life that God wants you to do, that he wants you to fall in love with doing. And it may not be. It may lead you to something else that you are going to love doing, that you are going to um, be on the path you're meant to be for him on. But it's going to be hard, right? You're going to make some mistakes. 
guess what the best news is? If you do it with a lot of love in your heart, it's okay. Because that's how powerful love is. Even when you make mistakes, love is still more powerful than the mistakes. That's, that's some pretty good news, right? Y'all are awfully quiet this morning, just real wiggly. <laughs> okay, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for putting your love in our hearts and comforting us through our mistakes. Amen. Thanks, Emily. Well, today we are going to celebrate our teachers. Uh, we have, I know we have FUMP teachers in the house, school board members in the house, band directors in the house, professors in the house. I want coaches in the house. I want you to come forward. If you teach, lead in a classroom, in a college, in a, in a place, come on, in this, in FUMP, stand up, come forward. We want to celebrate you. You, you want to, we can send the kids. We, our, you want them to help you? Oh, you can help me. Yes, they would love Yay. that. Yay, you can help me celebrate all these teachers. We're going to line them all up front. Ooh. No, I, well, that's all right. Here, y'all, those those, you're like going to help me pass them out? Y'all can help me pass all these out to all these teachers. Okay. All right, you want to do that as they come forward? And when you do, say thank you. Say thank you for teaching. Look at this great group of teachers here. I want to, uh, Catherine, Catherine couldn't be here today. Oh, my mom sent me a text. My mom knows I'm in church right now. What is my mom doing sending me a text message? All right, where is my note from Catherine? Here it is. She could not be here today. Uh, but, but she said um, she wanted to personally thank uh, some teachers who retired at COVID that we didn't really get to celebrate when, uh, when they left FUMP. And so that's Sybil Johnson, KK White, uh, Denise Downing, and um, Susan Goodwin. And, uh, so, and then also Allison is here today who uh, was, where is she? Oh, she didn't come up. We, I got a water bottle with your name on it. So I'm gonna send some, here, you Ruby, you take this. You take this back to your mom, okay? You make sure she gets that. All right, did all right. So I want to take a minute to let everyone introduce themselves and say where they teach or what they teach or how they uh, expand young minds or old minds, for that matter. My name is Elizabeth. Uh, I teach piano and voice lessons here at the church. My name is George. I'm a physician, so I teach medical students and residents. My name is Beth Hopewell, and I work for the Rapids Parish School Board. I'm a homebound teacher, and I teach the children who are confined to their homes because of illness. I'm Shelly Hislip, and I teach uh, pre-K FUMP, pre-K pre 4 here at FUMP, and I don't know what James was talking about. I don't ever make mistakes, <laughs> ever. <laughs> My name is Donna Domang. I teach fourth and fifth grade science at Horseshoe Drive Elementary. I'm Colleen Spurgeon. I teach second grade um, autism at Horseshoe. I'm Colleen Brooks, and I teach kindergarten and first grade students with autism at Horseshoe Drive Elementary. Julie Sanders. I teach adaptive physical education as an itinerant teacher at J.B. Lafargue. Marie Wimbley, and I am with the events and curriculum coordinator at FUMP. Corrine Lee, I'm the assistant director here at FUMP. Steve Berry, I'm a member of the Rapids Parish School Board. Caitlin Gunn, and I am a newborn teacher. Caitlin Melder, and I'm a pre-K-2 teacher. Amber DeCourcy, and I teach a two-year-old. Emily Murphy, I teach fourth grade reading and writing at Pineville Elementary School. My name is Caleb Dixon. I am Miss Shelley's assistant going on three wonderful years, and I have the privilege of also teaching the kids here at First United Methodist. 
My name is Hannah Witcher, and I teach pre-K-2 here at First United Methodist Preschool. Mike Fish, I teach English at Marshfield High. Lacey Russell, I teach second grade reading at Oak Hill. Mary Hill, and I teach kindergarten at Mabel Brasher. Uh, John Hill and Grant High School. Susan Goodwin, um, I do a lot of things. I <laughs> teach swim lessons here. I have also helped with the children and youth here, and I also was a preschool helper teacher for about 10 years before COVID. Thank you. Jane Follett, I teach science at Montessori Educational Center. Help me thank these teachers. I want to pray for you. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you for the countless hours, dedication, time, energy, love that each one of these teachers pours into their work, into their students, into their classrooms, into all that they do, the many ways that they give of themselves. Thank you for the the foundation that they are laying in our community. Uh, we are better because of it. So, Lord, bless them. Bless them full to overflowing. This is truly our prayer, O oh Lord. Amen. Well, thank you, teachers, administrators. Thank you all for all that you do. We are blessed and grateful. And I hope you will all stay for lunch. Jane, I'll just let you take that microphone to the back for me. <laughs> Children's Church. So, and thank you, kids, for helping me uh, pass everything up. Young, you can just can you give that to your grandfather? He's looking for it. I know it's good. Stuff. Where would we be without teachers, right? We've all had teachers that did more than just give us information. We've all had a few teachers who inspired us. And when you think of the best teachers, sometimes it's just a friend of yours who's your best teacher. Um, t a good teacher can not only see your gifts, but they can bring out your gifts. And it's so cool, I can't even imagine teaching preschool where just the, the potential is so high and like they're discovering all these gifts for the first time. That must be so happy. <laughs> um, but you know, Jesus was an amazing teacher. He was patient. He, um, he had that heart of a teacher with everyone he encountered. And today, as we focus on relationships, um, we have to acknowledge that we're in relationships with everyone on earth. It's not just the people in our circle or our friends. We're in relationship with the person who cuts us off in traffic. We're in relationship with that person in the store who's annoying us. We're in relationship with everyone. And when we think like that, God can adjust our attitude. And when we're all at our best, that's when God can do his best work because he can move through us and inspire us and change us. And I know I, I actually have a very short temper. My choir doesn't know that. But Brandon knows that. Um, I have a very short temper. And when I, <laughs> he's in the back staring at me, when I show someone patience, I know it has nothing to do with me. I'm patient because God calls me to be patient. God, only God, can help me with that. And so as we grow, as we grow as a church, as we grow as a community, our prayer today is that God continues to inspire us. We are meant to inspire each other. Let's pray. 
God, you are the great artist. You have created each of us with care, not by accident. You filled each of us with abilities, with characteristics, with lovely traits. And so we ask that you continue to help us to bring those out of one another. Help us to be kind, not only to people we know, but to people we don't know, because your son would act that way. Help us to be more patient, more loving, and more like you in all that we say and do. For it is in Jesus' name that we worship and learn and grow today. Amen. Thank you, choir. As we come to our time of prayer, just a few folks we want to lift in our prayers uh, this week. Uh, we want to pray for healing. Uh, many are sick, especially with bronchitis, sinuses, and COVID seems to be making a resurgence in, uh, in our community. In fact, that is uh, one reason why Catherine was out uh, today, because she tested positive. So just prayers for all those folks. Uh, that are sick and in need of healing of all kinds. Again, we praise God for our teachers, our administrators, uh, all that were here uh, this day, and even those that aren't here, all those teachers that are in our classrooms. 
Uh, Randy, we continue to pray for you. We know that you're getting results this week, so we pray for uh, good news. We're also praying for your sister, uh, Janet, uh, for um, God's hand in, in her life, in her healing, in whatever form that comes. So, uh, And then we have a birthday among us. Jean Sanders is going to have a birthday on Thursday, Jean, so happy birthday, and we thank you for your life and your life among us. So now let us go to the throne of grace. Oh, there's a hand in the back. Who had a birthday yesterday? Oh, Paula Roberts had a birthday yesterday. Well, Paula, happy birthday. We, we praise God for your life as well. So thank you, Renita, for letting me know that. Well, let us now pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Spirit of the living God, we praise and adore you for empowering us to claim membership in the body of Christ. It is a gift. It is a gift received through the fullness of your grace. It is a comfort to us to know that we do not walk alone. We have a village of people, your servants, your disciples, ready to help us, ready to help carry our burdens, able to comfort us when we grieve, ready to watch our children prepare a meal, fix our car, or whatever is needed for friend and neighbor alike. It is a blessing. A blessing that only a community of faith can give to one another. So Lord, on this day, empower us anew. Open our eyes to the needs of your people. Open our hearts in compassion and love that we might bring reconciliation to broken homes, broken relationships, and broken spirits. Remind us that we are all members of the one body. And if one member suffers, we all suffer. May we, O oh Lord, be the body of Christ in this place. Be the best evidence of your love by all that we do and by all that we say. And now, Lord, bless our teachers and administrators, band directors and bus drivers, librarians and lunch ladies, custodians and school board members they have made a great sacrifice to teach our children protect the halls in which they walk and the classrooms in which they teach help our students to learn to understand to act with kindness and to make good choices and may we all O oh lord be recipients of your grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as we continue our sermon series on The Struggle is Real, we look at the real struggle of some relationships. Uh, we're going to read a couple of uh, passages here. First, uh, we're going to look at the first couple, Adam and Eve. And in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, meaning in the image of God, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all of the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And then these words from 
1 Peter in his letter, uh, these good words on being in relationship with one another. Chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, he says, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the the, with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, fill the busyness of our minds and open our hearts to you, that we may hear your word for us this day. Amen. Well, does anyone believe in love at first sight? Anyone? I, a, a few. Oh, nice. Uh, Rusty believes uh, in love at first sight, I'm sure, because, I mean, like, what's not to love? I, I can't say that I did. I, I don't know that I l was in love at first sight with Rusty, except for the fact that I love the fact that he had a car. Um, I love the fact that he had a job. I mean, Rusty was a grown man when I met him, uh, and I was in high school. Uh, so I love that. Uh, I love the fact, uh, well, I found it unusual that he called my dad by his first name. I mean, no boy I'd ever dated, you know, dared to call my dad by his first name. So, you know, Rusty would call my dad by his first name. And I love the fact um, that my dad loved Rusty so much that... Um, Rusty could always get an extension on my curfew. I've talked about my very strict curfew that I had. And so there was this one Friday night that we were going to go out. Rusty had a gig. You know, he's a mus I love that, too. I love the fact that, you know, I was dating a musician. That's Because that's, like, cool, you know. Uh, that's street cred, right? You date a musician. You know, Brandon, you and I are lucky people. Uh, so anyway, so Rusty had a gig. And so he tells my dad, he says, now look, Ray, um, I have a gig tonight, so there is no way that I can get Ramona Lynn home by 11 o'clock, so here's the address. And so he pushes his piece of paper across the table, and, and my dad says, uh, oh, that's all right, you can just bring her home, and pushes the address back to Rusty. And he says, well, Ray, you know, after the gig is over, we got to pack up all the instruments and that's probably going to take another hour so now we're looking at one o'clock so here's the address and my dad says that's all right you can just bring her home and he says well you know Ray after the we get the instruments packed up and into the car all the band is going to go to breakfast so now we're looking at 2 30 here's the address and my dad says that's too late for me just bring her home here's the key to the house <laughs> love at first sight, you know. I loved that about Rusty. He could always get me, you know, one, he could get me home on time. I told you that already. The only boy I dated with a watch, but he could also get me a late curfew. Well, the first couple. I bet it had to be love at first sight, right, Adam and Eve? I mean, they were made for each other, literally. They were made in the image of God. Scripture says, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. With all that God had created, the birds in the air, the fish in the sea, the world in which we live, the stars in which we see, Scripture also tells us that, that Adam was without a mate, that with all that was in the world, there was no one, there was nothing suitable or, co or compatible to be a partner to Adam. One translation says there was no partner right for him. There was no partner right for him. So God created Eve to be Adam's partner, his collaborator, to work alongside him, uh, to care for all the 
birds in the sky and the fish in the sea. She was his equal, his helpmate, both made in the image of God. A match truly made in heaven. But just as most marriages can kind of get a little rocky, so, so did Adam and Eve, you know? First off, they had a snake problem out in the garden. They got evicted from their first apartment, right? And then their kids, those brothers, they were at each other's throats, literally. For Adam and Eve, the struggle to be in relationship was real. And so we know now why we struggle. But who among us hasn't struggled? Whether you're married or not, don't stop listening to me just if you're not married because being in relationship with anyone, to have a significant, important relationship, whether it's uh, parent, child, uh, co-workers, neighbors, uh, friends, we can sometimes struggle to be in relationship with one another. The struggle is real. So... Peter, the apostle, gives us some pretty good information to help us with this struggle, to help us be in relationship with one another. Here's, I want to remind you what he says. He says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. I need to read that again. Each of you should be what each of you should use whatever gift that you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Now, the Apostle Peter was the author of this letter. Uh, And throughout, uh, if you have time this afternoon after your nap, I hope you'll read it from from one end to the other. Because you'll see that it is truly this letter of hope and encouragement. Because he knew that, that living in relationship with one another, no matter the relationship, is hard. And that, that we were created, though, from the very beginning, one, in the image of God, and two, to be in relationship with other people. But Peter also knew the struggle was real, which was why he was giving us some relationship advice. Peter didn't want their relationship with God and each other to become stale, to become business as usual. So he writes these words of encouragement uh, as a reminder of how we should treat each other, how we should act toward others who were also created in the image of God. So we get four building blocks from Peter in this passage, at least the four I'm going to talk about, uh, to help us live uh, in these Christ-centered relationships with anybody, whether it's a spouse, a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, a child. So let's uh, let's take a closer look. First Peter tells us in verse 8 to love deeply. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. When we love someone, it is much easier to forgive them. Uh, This love doesn't seek to possess, but seeks to to give to the other person, to, to love. It atones for the wrongdoings of someone else. We will love more quickly. First Corinthians says, love keeps no record of wrong. So we're not going to keep score when we love someone. And our love is unconditional. It endures like a marathon runner. I don't know if we have any runners. Well, we do. With Clark, uh, you're a runner. Uh, you train for that, right? Uh, so, you know, it's the same kind of thing that we, you know, you train for a marathon so that you have the endurance. That's the idea when it comes to relationships. We're not running a sprint here. We're enduring for the long haul. And that's, that's what a relationship is supposed to be. 
I think that probably the last argument Rusty and I had was in 2008. And I got to tell you, here's hope for you. Rusty and I, have been, it'll be, next month we'll be married 42 years. So any of you less than 42 years, there's hope. You eventually run out of things to argue about. Uh, you know, so, so, so our, our last really big argument was in 2008. We had just left here, Alexandria, moved to, um, where'd we go? New Orleans. And, um, and so it was, that, it was that summer, that same summer we moved from here. I had to go to Bishop's Week, a week-long uh, meeting. I, I took with me Larry Norman, your former associate pastor, and, and then I had Jamie that I had to drop off and Vivian on our way to Arkansas. So I had loaded up, you know, all this stuff in the back of my car, got it all loaded, got in the car, my 15-year-old, 250,000-mile Honda would not start. Dead. Dead in my driveway. Ah, you know, needed to go, needed to get on the road, uh, needed a car big enough to put all this stuff in, so I needed Rusty's car. And I get out of the car, I'm, you know, I go into the house, you know, because I've loaded the car by myself, I'm sure, maybe not, but, you know. Anyway, he was inside already, and I go, my car won't start. I got all this stuff. I got to take your car. And Rusty says, well, what am I supposed to do about a car? All right, men, that's the wrong answer. I just, I just, I'm just going to tell you, if your wife's car breaks down, you know, that is the wrong answer. Because, you know, he had a perfectly good, brand new, newer than either one of our cars, sports car that we had bought Jamie sitting in the driveway, and she wasn't going to use it because she was going to be with me. So it wasn't like I was making him, you know, walk to Baton Rouge to go to work. You know, he was going to have a vehicle to do that. You know, so it was the wrong answer, and I was mad. I was mad that that was the wrong answer that he gave me. And I, you know, I take, I load up his car, and I take it, you know, to Arkansas. I pick up Larry Norman, and, you know, he gets an earful about how mad I am because, you know, he's single, and surely he can fix this, you know, or whatever. You know, and, and he goes, the next day he goes, R.L., did, did you talk to Rusty? No, I didn't talk to Rusty. I'm mad. I have nothing good to say. It won't do me any good to talk to him. You, you should talk to him. I'm not talking to him. The next day he goes, R.L., did you talk to Rusty? I said, no, I didn't talk to Rusty. I'm still mad. There is nothing good to say about this. I'm not going to talk to him. By the third day, if he asked me, I talked to Rusty, and I said, I didn't talk to Rusty. And he says, R.L., you need to fix this. And I said, Larry, it's not broken. You know, when you have a long, enduring relationship, a little anger doesn't hurt anybody. Besides that, I, was, I had stayed quiet long enough that Rusty went out and bought me a new car, you know? He, he fixed it. The car was broken, but the marriage wasn't. Love one another deeply, as if you're a marathon runner, as if you're training for the long haul, because love, well, it covers a multitude of wrongdoings. It gives us the strength. Love gives us the strength to endure all things. All right, the second thing he says is practice hospitality. Verse 9, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Treat each other kindly. Don't act as if what you're doing for the other one is a great burden or a great bother to you. Do it with joy in your heart. Give of yourself to them uh, in, in as many ways as you possibly can. Show that you care about them, uh, that you care about that person more than you care about yourself. Rusty and I had gone to a Chinese restaurant. It was in a storefront. So, you know, there's this whole bank of uh, windows that we were sitting by. And, and we were living in New Orleans. And, you know, just like New Orleans, you can sit there and it's a, you go in and it's a beautiful day. And you walk out and it's raining, cats and dogs. So this particular day was like that. It was raining. Uh, and there was this young couple that was ready to leave. They had a toddler. And uh, so, the, so the dad runs out into the parking lot, gets the car, you know, runs out in the rain, gets the car, parks it up as close to the door as he possibly can, gets out with an umbrella, puts it over his wife and toddler, walks out to the car, stands there in the rain holding the umbrella for his wife while she 
puts the child in the car seat, then walks her uh, back over to the passenger side, puts her in the, in the car, you know, uh, have the umbrella over her the whole time. It's just raining, you know, just raining. And finally, when she's in the car, he takes that little Winnie the Pooh umbrella and puts it over his head. That's the kind of uh, hospitality that Peter's talking about in this verse, that you care more about that person than you care about yourself. Practice hospitality, which leads us to number three. The third thing we should do is be generous. Be generous, that's verse 10. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering to God's grace. Be generous, not as gift-giving, generous, look, see what I got you, I bought you a new car. Not that, but generous in a godly way. Don't hold back. Don't hold yourself back, even if sometimes that effort feels a little unequal. So I often tell couples, you know, marriage is like, or any relationship is like being in a canoe together. All right. If you're having trouble in a relationship, go get in a canoe together. Uh, if you start paddling in opposite directions, you're just going to go around in circles. Sometimes you might be the only one that's paddling in that relationship. All right. You're still going to get that canoe across the lake. It's going to be a little harder, a little more effort, take a little longer, but you'll get there. You just keep paddling. All right. Keep paddling until the other one has the strength to paddle with you. Because when you're both paddling in the same direction, you are going to go across that lake like glass. Love one another. Be generous with your gifts. Don't give of yourself selfishly. Be unselfish using your God-given talents to better the relationship. If you can cook, then cook. If you're good at cleaning, then clean. If you're good at making a living, go make a living. Whatever your gift is, use it to the betterment of the relationship. Don't hold it back. And then value the other person's gifts as well. Because there is no one gift better or greater than your own. All right? A gift in a marriage, in a relationship, a gift is a gift to be valued. All right, finally, speak kindly. Verse 11, if anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. <laughs> all right, all right. Are the words that are coming out of your mouth, are they, would God use those words? Hmm? Especially when you're mad? Oh, yeah, I know, I'm looking in the mirror. I'm, y'all are just listening into my, the, what I'm telling myself. So many times we use words that God would not use, that's for sure. Traffic language. Use words that, let the words that come out of your mouth be the very words of God that we say to someone else. So uh, Jane and Leonard Fitzgerald were in my church and they were in their second marriage and um leonard was uh, sick in the hospital and he had early signs of dementia or alzheimer's and while i was visiting them uh his lunch plate came and he had broccoli on it and he said to his wife jane honey i got broccoli do you want it oh no, I don't want it, you can eat it. He probably asked her that 15 times. He didn't remember it, he asked it the time before. 15 times while I was there in 15 minutes, you know. Honey, I got broccoli, do you want it? Oh no, I'm not hungry, you can have it. Jane, I got some broccoli here, do you want it? Oh no, you can have it. Do you know every time he asked, she answered as if it was the first time. I stood there in awe because there was a moment in which I thought, no, Leonard, she said she didn't want it, you know? But she never was like that. She answered each and every time as if it were the first time. 
Speak kindly as if you are speaking the very words of God. All right, last thing, just some good relationship advice. So Rusty and I have been married almost 42 years, but you know Russ and Jane Jackson sits over there, 66 years. So I was talking to him. I said, all right, tell me. Tell me what is the secret to a long-lasting relationship. Because you, uh, you see how they met was their dads were friends. Russ had gone off in the military, and um, Russ's dad asked Jane's dad, hey, if Jane doesn't have a boyfriend, do you think she'd just write my son? Because, you know, he's gone off, and he's lonely. He doesn't know anybody. Just words from home of encouragement. She started writing. They became pen pals. They wrote back and forth. You know, that was when you, like, mailed something and put a stamp on it and stuck it in the mail. And, and they would just write back and forth. He came home in May. They had six dates. Must have been incredible because by June they were married. And they had been married 66 years. So I said, what's the secret? And she says, well, I think communication is the key. And I said, oh, that sounds good. You know, because the other person can't read your mind. She said, respect and love each other. Show caring and consideration. And then I thought, because I could hear Russ laughing in the background, that humor is probably important, you know? Because all of a sudden she started cackling, you know, like the little schoolgirl laugh. And I said, oh, oh, what, what do you say? What do you say? And, and Jane says, well, I asked Russ if he, if he had anything to add to this conversation. One, he was smart because he said he didn't. But what he said was, because she said, she said, Russ, you got anything to add to this? And he says, oh, no, I never learned how to add or subtract. <laughs> so humor, humor is important uh, in a relationship. Ruth Graham, wife of Billy Graham, said, a good marriage is the union of two forgivers. A good marriage is the union of two forgivers. All right, so if the struggle is real for you, no matter the relationship, parent, child, friend, neighbor, spouse, coworker, speak kindly, be generous, practice hospitality, but most of all, love deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for showing us what love is. Thank you for creating us in your image. Help us, Lord, to be more like your son, Jesus. Help us to love one another as you have loved us. This we pray in your name. Amen. All right, there's some great ways to connect in the life of the church. first one is uh, right after this meal. Uh, we are going to have a wonderful potluck lunch. Everyone is invited. The benediction is going to serve as the blessing. So when you, when you get to the line, you just start fixing your plate uh, and enjoy a wonderful meal. Uh, United Women in Faith uh, is kicking off their fall programming this Tuesday at 930 in the Fellowship Hall Lounge. So all ladies are invited. Next Sunday, the Renaissance House the director of Renaissance House will be speaking at 945 in the Seeker's Room. So she has a great program being offered that day. So I hope you can come an hour early and join in on that. You'll notice on the insert some really good stuff. How to sign up for Pumpkin Patch. This is our Sign Up Genius electronic sign up. There'll be hard copies out next week. I don't know if you've heard, but I'm going to prison uh, actually, Daphne's going to prison, and she's taken uh, me and Jean with her. Uh, <laughs> we're going next month. We need some prayer partners. So out on the table in that welcome area, are, we, we need 10 minutes at a time people to sign up to pray for us. It's pretty self-explanatory. So if you could pray, because they cover this whole four-day weekend while we're in the prison with prayer. And so we are looking for people to pray for uh, for us uh, during that time while we are doing that. Um, so that's out in the welcome area. When, you, when you're when you lined up to get your plate, you can scoot over there and look. Also, I don't know if you know that we do a news, an electronic news you can use kind of thing every, every other week. If you're not getting that email, there is a way for you to fill out this little slip and put it in the offering plate. And then I will be planning 2024 sermons really 
soon here. Uh, I don't want to just preach what I think I need to hear or what I think you need to hear. I want to preach what you want to hear. So uh, give me some ideas. Give me some thoughts. And you can also tear that off and put it in the offering plate as well. The best way to connect with the church is to make this church your church. And if you're ready to do that, love for you to come forward and let us celebrate that with you. But if that makes you nervous, then you can see me after the worship service. Elizabeth? Thank you. So if you forgot a, a dish, please still come to the potluck. One of the best things that Methodism offers is the fellowship. And it's not about the food. That's just a bonus. Um, What's most important is the fellowship and making friends with people who love Jesus. It's very important to your spiritual life. So please plan to join us for lunch. We'd love to see you there. Our closing hymn today, it can be found in your The Faith We Sing books. It's number 2223. They'll know we are Christians by our love. That's number 2223. Let's stand and sing together. Thank you all for being here, especially our guests, especially our teachers this day. Go forth with the good news of a great God that loves you, loves you no matter what. Tell everyone you know, treat them kindly where you work, where you play, and where you live. And may God bless this food and bless all of you. May his peace be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.